Hello and welcome to another Debella's Designs video. Today we're going to be making Rescue 911 and this is going to be um, a 5x7 that you can turn into a card or you could put this on canvas if you want to do it directly to canvas or on a book any way you want. That's why I have not done anything further with it. I'm thinking I'm probably going to put it on a book. I'm not really sure yet, but, or I could frame it. I don't have a frame yet. A black frame would look really pretty with this. So this is what we're going to make today. And what you're going to need, you need cardio cottontail capers uh, stamps. And um, we're going to be using this stand up bunny today. Get those from DeBello's Designs. And all these supplies, you can find them down below in the list with links. So it's not a problem to find them. This is Rogue. She's going to be the star of the show. She's uh, LAV850. She's pulling this plant out of the bottle. And you're going to need a cork for your bottle. I used this one today. wanted something not too fancy, not too plain. And this is called Corks. And it's 861 LAV. And then I used this particular uh, mask. It's a sticky mask. So when you get this, you need to make sure you pull the, the uh, film off before they'll separate. And it's sticker stencil number six. Like I said, I used this one out of the four that you get in the collection for this particular set. Then I'm going to, I'm going to be also using my um, Misty stamping platform with a Sweet Petunia insert that's a sticky insert. And for making this card, I used two different brushes. Um, these are blending brushes. This is a small one that's angled, and this is a fatter one, and I used this for the shadows. I used, um, for the edge work and the bottle, I used Stormy Sky and Speckled Egg, as well as Weathered Wood and Lost Shadow. Weathered Wood and Lost Shadow are used for the bottle. For the silhouettes, I used Versafine in the Black Onyx. I did a little bit of edge work with Versafine Morning Mist. You don't really need it. It doesn't very it doesn't show up as well anyway. But if you choose to use more of this, you always could. I used Versafine Claire Fallen Leaves for the cork, but it doesn't look brown at all. It looks like a black. So I'm recommending that you, um, if you want it to look brown and not so dark, don't do what I did. Don't do the first stamp. Stamp off first and then do the second gen stamp. And that way you'll get the brown color and it won't be so um, prominent in the picture. Um, I had to do some tricks in order to make it more subdued in behind the glass. You need a blender. That's my sponge blender. You need a mechanical pencil. You need some sort of uh, fine point black drawing pen. And then I used also um, this white acrylic painter's brush. Um, you can get one by Tosco as well. And I chose to go with a simple, clean and simple design. Um, but you could get as fun with this as you want, um, as vibrant. Uh, the, the key is making the glass look like glass and keep it kind of soft but rough at the breaks because it's broken glass. All right, so let's get started. All right, mask is on the paper and it's not pre-cut, mine isn't, but you could pre-cut it to five by seven or whatever size you like that works for the stencil you picked out. I'm using Lost Shadow here with a blending brush, following the edges of the mask um, to create this vase shape. I've already picked out my light source to come from, in this case, it's coming from above and slightly to the right. That's because my paper is turned. I just pointed that out. So the opposite side is going to be a little bit darker. I'm also putting the stamp on here so I can see where I'd like the, um, the fairy to go. So I'm going to go back in. I'm going to put the last shadow, which is that real pretty gray, 
in around the edges. I'm not going to go heavy handed here. You can always add more. It's a lot harder to get rid of something if you have too much. So go light, add more as you wish. The base, of course, is going to be darker. Um, where the neck of the jar goes in, it's going to be darker there. And then opposite of where your sun is going to be shining, it's going to be a little bit darker there. So um, once you get your baseline of color in, you could test it and don't pull it, pull it up right away. It's kind of hard to see, but you're good to go. And you can go on to weathered wood. Now weathered wood is a really interesting color. It's it's kind of gray, kind of blue. It's kind of a wedge wood color. It's a really, really nice color. I like it. And I can see where, depending on what you're using with it, it can change colors. So that's a really nice choice for this bottle because I wanted this bottle to look translucent with a hue of blue and, of course, the shadows. So I'm putting down the ink. You can always start on the stencil itself and then smear it onto your paper if you want to and that's kind of what i'm doing here and then any ink that you have left over on the stencil you can gather it up with your brush and um you just put it somewhere else or directly on the paper where it's closest it doesn't matter it stays fresh and wet for you to use it's really nice so like i said i'm just going around here following the shape of the jar and now i'm putting in a highlight and I'm trying to go with the same shape of the jar itself. And now I'm putting in that imaginary bottom that you can't see that you have to create by doing an oval shape that follows the, um, the bottle itself. So, Because you're looking through the glass, so you can barely see this. it has this base. That base is important because that's where your plant is going to be um, growing out of. It's, it's going to have a little bit of dirt, a little tuft of grass, and it's going to be growing in that inside the jar. Okay. <laughs> Oh my gosh, what was that? Okay, I'm back. And I'm back to normal. We're going to draw the, the hole. Uh, after the glass was broken out of the jar and that's what I'm working on right now using a mechanical pencil um, you want to make straight lines pointy cuts um, think of shards of glass and you just go around and you make the shape uh, basically kind of a circle but broken I hope that's helpful um, that's just what I kept thinking to myself. And now I'm, I'm taking the pencil and darkening some of the imaginary lines that I created for the uh, jar base. And this will get smeared because it's pencil and you can always erase it. Um, I'm also going to go in and double those lines for the breaks in the glass. <clears throat> what you do is you draw another line right next to it with a little bit of space because what you're doing is you got to remember this is this is glass it has some thickness to it so you can't just have it one line you have to have a secondary line to show a lip going completely around all of the breaks okay so that's what I'm doing here okay now what I'm doing besides the additional lines, I'm darkening um, the cracks and especially where uh, there is what I call a joint. Um, I'm going to make it 
darker, more indents into the glass. I'm going to make that darker still. So you just go around, you keep doing this and doubling up the lines and you get that crack effect. You just keep repeating these same steps that I've shown you, doubling up the lines to create the lip of all the breaks in the glass and um, putting more graphite in the places where it comes to like a point, for example, like right here, um, and where it, the sun's going to be more apt to hit it, you won't have it as dark. You just go around and you put those lines in. And then what you're going to want to do is create breaks in the glass. Now for doing this, you just need, think of lightning, and you start off a little bit darker and you get lighter as it branches out. It, it looks like lightning, it kind of looks like tree branches, but in the end it looks like cracks in the glass and that's what you're going for. You're going for cracks. There's nothing saying you can't have a really long crack going around the bottle. So obviously it's going to be a more profound crack near the opening where the break happened. Um, but as you go out from that, you could have a bigger crack and have it wrap around. See what I just did? I just wrapped it around. It went around. There we go. It's going around to the back side of the jar. You see? So when you do that, you just need to have it curved because you've got a curved surface here, not flat. So um, you're going to create those cracks and accentuate them as they get closer to the opening and the break and then have them lighten up. We're going to go back in with a blending brush and some more ink so that we can um, do some shadows on these. And here was another opportunity I found where I could just wrap that really cool, almost lightning bolt effect, branch it around the glass. That looks cool. I like that. You just keep doing that until you're happy with what you have. You can put in as little or as many cracks as you want. It doesn't matter. Now, I'm getting out my pen here. Now this is one technique you could do if you want to, and that's where you put the uh, the drawing ink in down. However, after doing it this way, and I did it a different way the, a second time, the second time around I did not put the black ink in, and instead I used the, dis, um, the Distress Oxide inks instead, and I got a much better effect. So you can do it either way. Um, you can just use a lot of pencil, you can use the ink, you can use both, um, whatever you like. Just remember that when you use the black ink like this, as I'm doing, um, it has a tendency to bring more attention to the opening because it's so much darker. And you've got this um, really soft looking glass. So my recommendation is to keep it lighter. So, um, but if you're going to keep it lighter, you can do the same thing using pencils or colored pencils or the inks. Okay. All right, we're back and you might notice that the jar is a little different. This is from my first filming and where I messed up, but this time that's the second filming. I'm doing it right. And you can see I haven't inked the bottom portion of the plant. If when you stamp, it's not quite what you want, you can use your black ink pen to put in a little bit of detail. Now you get your same black pen and you're going to draw the stem. But when you reach the glass, you're going to have it off centered because the glass skews the perspective. Draw in a few blades of grass with a pencil, put in some lines going back and forth for the ground. And then you go in with your blender brush and that lost shadow, smearing both the graphite with the ink. It creates this really wonderful softened, cracked look in the glass. Then you're going to grab your um, uh, weathered wood uh, color 
and you're going to do the same thing but only in certain parts because it's going to add a tint of blue just ever so slightly. Um, once you've done that then you go back in with the pencil and you darken some spots where it'll be um, you know where the lights not hitting it so much and where the cracks are deeper. I went in here with a blender brush and added a little more of the lost shadow to uh, create some depth and then it's time to put in the cork. Now you're going to see this way I did it but I recommend you watch the entire video all the way to the end because I, I gave you some bonus materials with tips. So I um, noticed how dark this brown ink was. Uh, it actually looks black and it was way too dark. So I went back over the cork that's inside the jar with the weathered wood oxide ink. And then I brought it into the base as well to give it uh, a foundation. This is my white acrylic paint pen and I just went in and put in highlights for the glass. And now let's cue in the music for the rest of this. This is um, a bonus clip. Now, as you can see, I've got the mask on here over my bottle. Okay. Now, the this is my first bottle from my first filming, and as you can see, I completely forgot to clear off the stamp. Got very excited, brought it down, and did exactly what I meant not to do. So this is. Um, I'm just, for example purposes today, I'm showing you this um, little trick that you might want to do for the cork. After you have finished with your bottle, take the inside part of the mask, put it over the bottle, then take your cork, line it up so that you'll see. See there's this top part here and then the bottom part. So you want the top part of the glass to be right there. So I'm going to line that up. I'm 
I'm going to pick up my stamp. Now, I had used fallen leaves last time and it's very, very dark. This time I'm going to use um, acorn, okay? It has a more reddish brown appearance to it. Okay, I'm going to stamp up my cork. Bring this down and yep, you're going to get ink on that uh, mask. Okay, see how this is right now? Don't worry about that. You take the mask off. You can clean that off later. You're going to bring this down again and press. So now this uh, cork, I didn't get it down as far, but that's okay. That doesn't matter. Um, but you see what I'm talking about, okay? It's subdued. You see that? You could even um, take some of the ink off and make it even lighter if you want to. But from this point on, everything I showed you before in the video, I would do that, putting ink over the part of the cork that's inside the glass. Okay, so I just wanted to show you that as another um, thing that you could do and idea for using the inside portion of your mask. All right.